Hey, everybody. How's it going? Today, what I'd like to do is talk about market manipulation, Wall Street bets, the mainstream media, institutional investors, and how they are trying to completely pull the wool over your eyes so that you blame the wrong group of people for what's been going on today. This makes me incredibly, incredibly angry and aggravated because what they're doing in a lot of the articles that I'm reading is they are framing the argument to prime the pump for you to be mad at someone that you shouldn't be mad at. They don't want you to be mad at the institutional investor. They don't want you to be mad at the greedy hedge fund manager. They want you to be mad at someone just like you who's typing on, on the, you know, their keyboard some funny crap during work, posting little rocket ship emojis, and buying stock. And most of the time, I imagine, from what I see from the posts, fairly small quantity. Now, to be clear here, just because I am getting up here to, to talk to you about the bullshit that money managers and hedge fund managers and institutional investors are trying to get across does not mean that I agree wholeheartedly with everything that I see posted on the Wall Street Bets forum. Just because I dislike the money managers that appear to be pushing what I believe to be a false narrative doesn't mean I sign off on everything I read here. This is a ridiculous place. Most of the people who are members of this ridiculous place will tell you that they are ridiculous and that this is a ridiculous place. I am not saying that I agree with everything they say or everything that they do. All I'm saying is that this is a two-sided story, and at this point in time, I believe that you are hearing one side. So what went on and what is it that pissed me off about it and uh, how are we going to dig into this? So what we're talking about is GameStop going from around four or five bucks earlier last year to all the way up to a hundred and forty dollars today. So GameStop is a retailer of video games. As you can see over the past five years, their market cap has kind of been bleeding out slowly. More people are buying the games online. More people are having them shipped to them using other platforms other than GameStop. GameStop is not exactly a particularly very like store. It's an old blockbusterish model. So a lot of people thought that GameStop was not going to to, to survive the transition so that we're making in our economy right now, whether it's you know retail going away or brick and mortar going away or both when it comes to selling video games. So the stock has been going down. And as you can see, over the past six months, there has been a radical comeback here where, you know, right before Halloween, it went up to around $10. And then right around Christmas, it was, you know, hitting around almost close to $20. And then it hit up to $35, then $40, then $60, and earlier today it hit $140, which is absolutely insane. And there are a lot of people on this forum on the internet called Wall Street Bets that are saying, I like the stock. Buy the stock. You should buy the stock. Here's why you should buy the stock. And they post funny memes, which makes them an easy target because they talk in silly terms and they, they call each other retards and gay bears and curse at each other and all this crap. It's, they're, they're an easy target to single out and show, look at all these bad people. When in reality, again, they're just... They're memeing, and realistically speaking, that, that's probably how people talk at, uh, on the trading floor anyway. My dad was a broker in the late 80s, and this is, this is how a lot of people talk. It's actually usually much worse than this. Anyway, so what's going on here? Well, the news is going to make you think that these people are all evil market manipulators that sat down and hacked something or did some evil thing to manipulate the stock to make it go this high, as if nobody else had a hand in this occurring. What they're not doing is they're not discussing the actual cause. They're showing you the funny screenshots of the funny posts. They're showing you the high stock price after the funny posts, but they're not actually showing you how we got here. Now, in order to explain how we got here, I'm going to try to explain the very concept of short selling and every, everything else, how stocks go up and down, because you may think this is all being overly simplistic, but these articles that are priming people to not hate the hedge fund investor or the institutional investors that are priming you to hate normal everyday people, they're relying on people who don't have a knowledge of the market, who don't have a knowledge of finance, because those are the people who are going to fall for this stuff. So I'm targeting this video for people uh, who don't understand the market, which is why I'm going to explain things very simplistically. So stocks go up when more people want them because the companies are doing better or they're going to do better. Stocks go down 
when less people want them because the, that company is doing worse or they did something stupid. Just like any other good in life, if, you know, if, if 10,000 people want this camera and there's only five of them in the store, it's, chances are the store is probably going to raise their price on them. And if five of this camera are in the store and they're sitting there for a year and nobody wants them, it's probably going to go on sale and be cheaper. This is the basic rules of supply and demand, which is followed virtually all over the world, except for, of course, New York City real estate. We're just going to pretend New York City doesn't exist for the purpose of this video because New York makes no sense. So if you think a stock is going to go up, You'll buy it because that means that you'll make money over time. So let's say that you think that GameStop is a good company. You go over to the, your broker and you ask for 10 shares when GameStop is $10 per share. That means that you have now spent $100 on GameStop stock. If GameStop does well and goes to $20 a share, now your shares are worth $200, meaning that you just made money. And if GameStop does poorly and goes to $1 a share, it goes to 10 Now your, your shares are worth $10. You just lost 90 bucks. When you're purchasing shares of a stock, this is the very important part here. The worst thing that can happen is that you lose your initial investment. So if you purchase 10 shares of GameStop at $10 a piece, the worst thing that can happen to you is that your $100 goes to zero if they go bankrupt and they are insolvent and they go, and they go out of business entirely. The worst thing that can happen is you lose your initial investment. But that's it. You put $100 in, you lose $100. Now, there's another type of investing called short selling, and this is much more risky, and this is something that a lot of the institutional investors and larger investors are able to engage in more so than us, for reasons I'll explain in a moment. Short selling is when instead of purchasing the stock, let's say the stock is at $10 a share and I think it's going to go down to a dollar and I want to make money off that, I will borrow the shares from someone and then the moment I borrow that your shares, I will immediately sell them to somebody else. So let's say it's $10 a share. I borrow 10 of your shares and then I sell those 10 shares to someone else for 10 bucks a piece. I haven't paid for anything yet, so I have $100 in my bank account. And if it goes down to $1 a share, well, I, have to, I don't have to pay you back right now for the shares. I can pay you later. So I sell the shares. I've sold them. I have sold uh, 10 shares of GameStop at $10 a piece in this, in this scenario. I have $100, and the stock next week goes down to $1. Now, I'm, I borrowed the shares, but I'm paying for them later. So if it went down, now I only have to pay 10 bucks. So as a result of the stock going from $10 to $1, me short selling 10 shares, I am now ahead $90 because I got the $100 last week, and now when it's time for me to pay the piper and pay for the borrowed shares, I'm paying for them based on the price that they are now, which means that I am paying only $10. This means that I get to make money off of the stock going down. The downside to this approach is that there is infinite downside. Let's say that the stock goes up to $100 a share. Now it's $1,000. So I just made $100, but I have to pay $1,000. Let's say the stock goes up to $1,000 a share. I just made 100, but now I have to pay 10,000. Let's say the stock goes up to a million dollars a share. My short sell just made me $100 because I sold it for the $10 a share. Next week, they, fit, you know, they find another planet and invent time travel, and GameStop is now a million dollars. Now I owe you 10 million. You see, here's the problem with short selling. You don't just lose your, your initial investment because there is no initial investment. The potential for loss when short selling is literally infinite. And you can typically only short sell with, uh, if you have an account that has a certain amount of money in it or margin. So you usually, at your broker, at least before the Robinhood chick came in and everybody got margin, you used to have to speak with someone, show them documents and all this other crap and go through this process to get margin. It wasn't something that some jackass like me sitting here in a worn out Under Armour shirt and a crappy old sweater could just get immediately. I don't have margin on, on my account at this point in time. This is something that was typically reserved for expert investors, large hedge funds, or institutional investors. Because when the stock winds up going up, you need to have enough money that the broker is not going to come over to you and demand that you sell your stuff now. You have to have a broker that's going to be understanding that, let's say, no, I really think it's going to go down. Just give me a week or two because the broker is going to be on the hook if you don't pay him. This is something that it's typically done by large institutional investors. 
and hedge funds. This is important to understand because it helps give you context as to why the money managers, institutional investors, and hedge fund owners are as mad as they are right now and are as angry as they are right now and why they want to immediately get on TV or Bloomberg or the New York Times or Yahoo Finance and immediately start blaming someone else for what is going on. They are this mad because they did not just, they're not just an investor that invested and lost their initial investment. They decided to make a very greedy investment that is very risky and very speculative, and as a result of making that risky speculative investment, lost many multiples of their initial investment. So what they were doing with GameStop is they were shorting the stock. Now, shorting a stock in and of itself is not the worst thing in the world. Again, you're betting on the stock failing. You're going to cause the stock to go down, so you're kind of betting on people's misery, people losing their jobs. It's not the nicest thing. But shorting in and of itself is not particularly horrible. What happened here is that they shorted over 100% of the available shares. So instead of saying, I think GameStop is going to go down, let me, make a, let me make a small bet on it, they decided to literally bet everything. They bet more than everything, which is why this happened. So had the institutional investors, had the hedge funds not been as greedy as they were, a group of internet kids would never have been able to do what they did. The reason that they were able to do what they did is because these people got caught with their dick in the cookie jar. And you're not supposed to put your dick in the cookie jar. They got caught. It's not that the institutional investors were uh, these, these kind, prim and proper people wearing their bow tie and you know, doing everything all prim and proper were just, you know, as they were on their walk home, were robbed by an, a mob of angry kids. No. A bunch of kids saw that adult grown up stealing from a house, and then they said, no, fuck that, we're reporting you. And then they got reported, and now here's the thing. They don't want to pay the piper. And they're hoping that if they're able to pull the wool over your eyes, they won't get in trouble. See, if a bunch of kids catch an adult stealing from someone's home or breaking into a car, it's really hard to spin that because you know that that's wrong. But if a bunch of kids find an adult going, you know, sh uh, short selling in a way that probably should be illegal with more than 100% of the float that's available. It's financial mumbo jumbo. And if you don't understand the financial mumbo jumbo, you're not even going to understand that those kids were not doing something wrong. They simply found out that these people were, were being greedy and doing shit they shouldn't have done. And that, hey, you know, they fucking deserve to get in trouble for it. So short selling is something that's actually going to cause the price of a stock to go down. Because keep in mind, what I'm saying is I'm going to buy the stock later. I'm not going to buy it now because buying makes the, the price go up. Selling is going to make it go down. I'm going to sell a bunch of it right now. And if you sell a bunch of it right now, what that does is it brings the stock price down. Further, once the stock price goes down, other people start to get nervous and go, wait, I don't want to lose the whole value of my investment. I don't want to lose all the money that I've made. No! And they get nervous and they cash out. When they cash out, it lowers the price even more. When the price goes down even more, that causes other people to then go, oh God, I need to sell out. When they sell out, the price goes down more, which causes other people to go, oh God, and, and, uh, cause, the pr and cause them to sell out and the price to go down even more. And as this continues to occur, what happens is, the short seller, the original short seller, could just, you know, finish their position, you know, just be done with it. Or if they're a greedy fuckface, they could double or nothing it and say, no, we're going to short sell again and again and again. And that's what happened. Rather than simply be happy that they were able to beat this stock, to absolutely brutally browbeat this thing down from it being worth, you know, $25 all the way to being worth fucking $3. Rather than being happy that there was an over 5 or 7 or 800 or 900% return on their fucking investment, they needed to keep going back and back and back. Because when you're a billionaire hedge fund manager, when you're an institutional investor worth hundreds of millions of dollars, well... Let's just keep doing it. Let's keep robbing the American people blind. Let's keep robbing the people who bought this thing blind. Let's keep manipulating them. Let's keep making them think that this is going to fail when in reality it's all artificial. It's all short selling that is going to have to be covered later. At, and when they cover, here's the thing, yeah, they drove it down, but they got to buy all that shit back, which means it's going to go back up. So if the company is truly failing, it doesn't matter because you're going to buy it at a low price because everybody else is selling. If the company is not really failing, if the company is not really in complete disarray, and you short over 100% of the available fucking shares, when it goes down, it's actually going to rock it back up. Because again, 
you're, keep in mind, you're paying interest on that money. So let's say I borrow 10 shares of stock at when it was at $10 a share. I'm, I, I borrowed $100 from my broker for them to lend me those shares. So now I need my broker to, uh, to, uh, to loan me money. They're going to charge me interest on that. Now, if a stock goes up from 3 to 5 to 10, 20 to 30, my broker is going to call me and say, listen, man, uh, you know, I know that you're good for the $100 in your bank account. I don't know if you're good for 300 so I need you to immediately cover and pay right now. You're not waiting anymore for this to go down. Imagine how bad this is when the stock goes from 10 to 20 to 30 to 40 to 50 to 60 to 80 to 100 to 120 to 140. That's what happened here. And as a result of that happening, all of these, all of these uh, institutional investors are now being forced to close their positions, a.k.a. buy the stock that they finally pay for the stock that they borrowed and short sold months ago. So these institutional investors, as the stock went down from 25 to 20 to 15 to 12 to 10 to 8, they didn't sell. They, they, never, they never closed their position here. They waited till it got the fucking three, and they kept shorting it. So what happens at this point is now a bunch of people found this out because you can see what percentage of the stock or the open shares are short. This is easy to find on any website. So a bunch of people that had nothing better to do because they probably lost their jobs because they're considered non-fucking essential by Andrew Cuomo said, okay, listen, I got nothing better to do with my day. Let me just go through every single stock in the fucking market and see what the shares are available short and compare that to their book value or their total equity or their cash on hand or whatever. And a bunch of people did that because they have a bunch of time to because they have no job to go to. And they found GameStop and they saw, huh, hmm. This, the market cap on this has went down by over five times in the past two year, two or three years, and it's over 100% share shorted. And this is really cheap. If I buy this, it's going to go up because they need to cover. I know that all of these institutional investors are going to need to purchase this stock or, need to, or they're going to need to buy shares to cover their short position. So this is going to go up. Okay, cool. I'll buy it. And then they shared the information with everybody else and said, hey, I found out that this company with these details has been short sold by all of these greedy institutional investors. Look at this link where you could see that over 100% of the shares are shorted. Why don't you... Listen, I'm buying. Do you... What do you think of this information? Now, do keep in mind the way short selling works. You are borrowing the shares from somebody else in order to sell them. You haven't paid for them yet. That's how you make your money. You're going to pay for the shares later when you give them back once the shares have gone down in price. That's how short sellers make money. So because the short seller has borrowed the shares to sell them, they are on the hook. They need to replace those shares. They need to buy those shares back from somebody. And if on the open market, more sh short sellers have short sold shares than shares that are actually available, that means that we're in a situation where there are only five cameras available. There are 10 people that need to buy this camera because they, they, they broke their parents' camera and they're going to get in deep shit and, and, and punished if it's, if it's not returned. So you have five cameras on the market, 10 people that need to buy cameras, absolutely must buy cameras. What are they going to do now? They can't just buy it at the price that it's at the store. They're going to have to convince people that don't want to sell their cameras to sell their cameras. And how do you do that? Well, by asking more money. And that's what they're being forced to do. They would not be in this position if they did not try to short more than 100% of the available fucking shares, which probably should be illegal because they are greedy. So if I'm an investor and I'm able to find this information, I may not want to buy GameStop because I see that I know that they're going to have to convince me to sell my shares. So if I know that over 100% of the shares are shorted and the company is not in disarray and failing, I, have, I know that if I purchase it, that there's a good chance that the stock value will go up. Not because I'm manipulating it, simply because I am purchasing it and I am making a choice, which I'm allowed to make, that I do not wish to sell right now. It's not my fault that they got stuck with their dick in the cookie jar and are now forced to sell in order to give back what they borrowed and sold looking to make a profit off of other people's misery. So what people are now doing is they posted saying, hey, look at the amount of shares that were short with this one stock and look at its underlying fundamentals. Then other people came in and saw, oh, wow, yeah. It's not, they're not declaring bankruptcy or anything, and over 100% of the shares are shorted. All right, I'll buy some. And then someone else came by and saw this information and said, I'll buy some. 
Then other people came by and said, wow, they're that greedy? All right, cool, I'll buy some. And then they waited. They diamond hands, they held. Now, what the media and what the, these institutional investors are making it sound like, they're making it sound like all these kids just put guns to these people's heads to rob them blind. No, what you need to understand is that all they did is purchase shares. Why are these people in the position where they're forced to purchase GameStop shares at these insane prices? They're there because they short sold over 100% because they're greedy. And then when the institutional investors are then forced to cover, then they start crying and they start playing the victim because they did something wrong. They know they did something wrong. They know they didn't close their position when they should have. They knew what the fuck they were doing the entire time, and now they got caught with their dick in the cookie jar. And rather than just admit, you're not supposed to put your dick in the cookie jar, they're trying to reframe the conversation. They're trying to trick you because they know that the average person doesn't have a lot of understanding of investing. If you asked me the mechanism through which short selling and all this crap worked even just a few years ago, I wouldn't have really understand it, it either. So they're relying on the fact that if they get on Bloomberg and the New York Times and CNBC and Yahoo Finance and all these other places and they present their case and they show you some pictures of people in this group speaking in a manner that, that that's, you know, kind of crass. And again, they're, they're talking about someone fucking their wife's boyfriend and they're, they're using emojis of like gay bear and stuff that they'll be able to start getting programming you to think, oh, I should listen to the institutional investors that wear a suit and tie and look all proper, not these people who admittedly self-identify and call themselves retards on this forum. That couldn't be further from the truth. They are trying to cover the fact that what they were doing was incredibly greedy, incredibly damaging, probably should fucking be illegal, that they should probably be investigated by the SEC by pointing the finger at someone else. This stock is not going up the way it is because you have some kids on a Reddit group that are manipulating the stock market. The manipulation occurred before they ever found it. The manipulation occurred when these hedge funds and these institutional investors decided that they were going to short sell it over 100% and keep that fucking position, driving the stock down to where it was over here. The manipulation was not on the way up. The manipulation was on the way down. This over here is not the manipulation. This over here was the fuck you to the people who were doing the manipulating. This over here, all this, this crap going down over here, that was what I would call, in my opinion, the manipulation. And what they're trying to do is pretend that that didn't happen. In your heart of hearts, when you really think down to earth, who do you think is looking to to uh, pull the wool over your eyes, screw you over, and take your money more. Average dude on Reddit that probably lost his job, multi-billionaire hedge fund manager. <laughs> like, just, just think about that for a moment. Just, like, just, just think about that. Who do you trust more? It's like, on a guttural level. And you have to understand, that short selling in and of itself is not necessarily the worst thing in the world. When it comes to companies like Enron, the people that figured out that Enron were a scam were short sellers. It's good to have a financial profit motive where an investor can make money off of a company going downhill because what it does is it balances things out. So let's say, let, let's say that I were invested in GameStop and I would make money if GameStop became more valuable. I now have a financial incentive to lie to you and tell you that the company is worth more than it is and to pump it and to talk about it as if it's the greatest thing in the world when it's actually a pile of shit because I make money if it goes up. This is then countered or balanced by people that are short sellers because short sellers make money when a stock goes down. So a short seller is going to say, I think you're being a little bit too overly optimistic there. Or you see this area where you say you can make $10 million in revenue off of that? You actually can only make 100000 and here's why, based on what your competitors are selling and what you're selling. So the short sellers and, and, the, and the people who are more bullish, the people who are hoping that the stock price goes up, they balance each other out. The problem is when this goes out of balance, and it goes out of balance when you have a stock that is shorted over 100%. You have to understand, when you're shorting a stock, you're not just betting on the company going down. You're betting on their employees going out of work. If that company is actually in trouble, they could use their share price. They could use their valuation to you know, potentially le leverage or borrow money or some shit like that and to be able to borrow money that would be able to help them out. But they're not able to do that 
if their price continues tanking and their valuation continues tanking. So by shorting in this aggressive manner where over 100% of the float is shorted, you're kind of creating this self-fulfilling prophecy where you are betting on them failing. Actually, now you're actually helping them fail. You're actively causing them to fail. And then you put them into a death spiral. Once you're able to drill the price of the stock down so much, you're able to encourage other people to sell. When you encourage other people to sell, the price goes down more. If the company actually then starts failing, they're not able to get access to capital the same way they would before. And it gets worse and worse. You're betting on people losing their jobs. You're betting on people losing their life savings. And when you short a stock, let's be real here. It's not your average person that are shorting stocks to tens or hundreds of millions of dollars. It's institutional investors. It's not you. It's not Paul Daniels. It's not Jesse Jones. It's not me. It's not Paul that's doing this. It's institutional investors. They have the power to do this more so than your average person that is using Reddit because they are the ones that are going to get access to margin. They're the ones that are going to get access to large amounts of margin that your average person on Robinhood doesn't have access to. They're the ones that can actually have the power to manipulate the market, and they're the ones that are doing it. And what they're going to do is they're going to pretend that that didn't happen. You're not going to see the articles that are, that are being... Um, discussed when they show up on CNBC, you're not going to hear the people who have a financial stake in seeing companies like GameStop fail because they shorted them. You're not going to see them talk about how it was over 100% of the float that was short. They're, they're not going to start with that. They never start with that because if they started with that, it would change the narrative. They want you to focus on the comments in the Wall Street Bets forum. They want you to focus on their, their silly vocabulary and pretend that their rocket emojis have more power than someone with hundreds of millions of dollars of margin available when it comes to being able to manipulate the market. And that's, in my opinion, complete and utter disingenuous bullshit. What you are seeing right here with this stock uh, doing what it is, is, in my opinion, a true representation of the app's name Robinhood. What they're doing over here is the people that caused this to happen, that were uh, responsible for this happening to the extent that it did, for this stock being shorted over 100%. They are taking that money from those institutional investors and then returning it to the average retail investor, which is normal schmucks. You know, I was listening to CNBC earlier today, and there was this one fuckface on CNBC that actually said, what if this is a foreign power doing this? And they're just like, I, I almost lost my shit. Like, you really think that if Iran or China or Russia or North Korea wanted to fuck with us, they wouldn't. They wouldn't plant spies in our government. They wouldn't. Uh, you know. They, they wouldn't run disinformation campaigns. They. You know. They. They wouldn't have terrorist cells installed in the nation. They wouldn't bomb us. They would buy shares of an aging video game retailer. Really? Now, that's your argument. I don't know. You let me know what you think in the comments down below. Uh, as I said in the beginning of the video, this is not financial advice. This should not be construed as financial advice. I have not been a shareholder of GME up until today where I bought a very tiny amount solely so that I could say I was a little bit, I, that uh, over the course of history, when I'm a grandpa or a great grandpa, I can look back and say I, I bought a few shares of that meme. But that this is this is pretty much it. So that's it for today. As always, I hope you learned something. Uh, again, I, I would stand behind the idea that this is probably one of the shittiest times, in my opinion, to put money into the market because you have so many people tossing money in. Groups like this are, are growing in size with more and more people getting excited as they see things go up. People are assuming that because this went up, because of this circumstance, that everything is going to go up all the time. Many people are speculating that this particular stock market is a bubble. I am personally uh, scared of having anything in the market right now, and I have pulled out of most of my positions in anything. So I, I, I sold out of uh, the ICLN ETF I was in a while ago. I've sold out of just about every other position that I've had because I'm, I'm honest. Again, like, shit just can't keep going up and up and up and up and up and up, and up forever. I know the bears got slaughtered in March and April of 2020, but... Anyway, we'll see. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. That's it for today. And as always, I hope you learned something.